Well, we've been talking that, well, God is um, imputing to us righteousness. He's giving it, us his righteousness. He's declaring us clean and pure and holy before him when we believe in him. And Paul just goes a bit deeper. Um, and he, after giving us the examples of Abraham and David, and now he's saying, is this blessing then only for the circumcised, the Jews who are circumcised? or also for the uncircumcised. Who is it for, really? For we say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. So he says, how then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? Because that matters. If that blessing came to him, right, that word came to Abraham after he was circumcised, it's different than if it came to him before. And so Paul says, it was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So first he believed God and he was declared righteous. And then later on, God gave him the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he knew that he had established with, as, with, in Abraham. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised. So Abraham is the father, not only of the Jews, but Abraham is the father of us all who believe in Jesus Christ. He is the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that righteousness would be counted to them as well. Now, many people in the church today, Gentiles, those who are not Jews, are uncircumcised, physically uncircumcised. And... Um, the Bible says that Abraham is our father also, so that righteousness would be counted to us as well. Aren't you glad that, well, you are declared righteous before God? You know, that's the reason why when we walk into the house of God, we can walk and we can lift up our heads, not bend down in shame, not lifting up our heads in pride, no, but lifting up our heads in thankfulness and joy that Jesus has forgiven me. Isn't that an awesome thing? You know, and... I, I, I'll just talk a bit about that. You know, many times we walk into that and the devil condemns us. You're not good enough. Look at those other people in the church. They're all so much more righteous than you are. And no, you should bow your head in shame. And, and, and um, you, know, you shouldn't even come into the house of God because you are imperfect. You are a sinner. But because we know that Jesus cleansed us from of our sins. And beloved, you know, many times we can forgive others, but it's hard for us to forgive ourselves. It's so hard for us to forgive ourselves. You know, death is going to remind us of things that we have done. But, beloved, we can come into the house of God and we can say, Jesus, I so thank you for your forgiveness of my sins. And so Paul goes on, to make him the father of the circumcised, who are not merely circumcised, but also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. So Abraham is the father of those who are not circumcised, who have got the righteousness of God imputed them, and he's also the father of the circumcised, but not merely because they are circumcised physically, but they are walking in the footsteps of Abraham, right? Walking in the footsteps of faith that Abraham had before he was circumcised. So this blessing comes to the circumcised and to the uncircumcised, to us all today. We are forgiven and bless God, we can come into the house of God and we can lift up our hands and we can worship him and we can thank him. And don't let anything hinder you or, um, you know, try to, the devil whisper in your ear, you're not good enough. Let us worship him. He, the devil wants to steal our worship, doesn't want us to give God praise and thanks. But let's just lift our hands, lift our voices, sing and rejoice in him because he is our savior, our precious, precious redeemer. Don't you love him today? God bless you.